Yo, what's up guys? My name is Glock and welcome back to The Leather. We're now in part 10 and just about the start of chapter 3, which is Zach's POV of the story. But during the last time, Hannah had her fateful encounter with the ghost bitch and she managed to survive and is now safe. For now. But now we're here! We have to make a choice whether we play it off or tell the truth. Of what exactly? Well, Zach had his, um, has his flashbacks of his very tragic memory of how his parents got killed. So Isabella here kind of got wind of his problem, but she's still not really sure what it is. And if you guys remember, Zach has these pills to counteract his PTSD and stuff like that. So Isabella is just really concerned right now about for Zach. Despite her own problems. <laughs> so, should we play it off or should we tell the truth? Well, during the last part, I already know what to do. I mean, like, I've already... S I'm, I'm dead set on telling the truth to Isabella. You know, she, you know I, I don't know. Maybe it, it's something that can... Uh, if I tell her the truth, maybe she'll tell me the truth of what's bugging her. You know, so... You know, let's keep things mutual. Alright? But it's never easy. Isn't it? Talking about my own problems, that is. It will never be. Not by a long shot. Not when I've let it stay this way for so long. I realized that long ago when the wounds are still fresh and the dreams are a nightly occurrence. You can't force yourself to get better or move on to better things. It is what's normal and I can only cope. The question in her eyes may be unwarranted, born simply out of curiosity and sincere concern for a friend. I don't er owe her any explanation, in fact. But of all the people I keep close in my life, she's probably one of the very few who perhaps I can trust with this. Maybe she won't understand entirely, but I can never hope she will. No, never to the full extent. That alone is expecting too much of her and giving too much of what I can. However, for all her shortcomings, I know she'll hear me out. And that is all I can ask of her. My bad. I was kind of hoping you wouldn't have seen me with these. The pills rattle lightly against the container when I gently set it back to its usual place. Always the small area closest to my laptop near the right hand. Within reach whenever and a quiet reminder of what I shouldn't miss every day. Wow, how long has he been taking these pills? What? Oh, is it bad? I was just thinking that maybe it's a cold like Becca's. Oh. <laughs> really now? Do you need me to get anything from the store? Soup or something? There's one nearby, right? I can run real quick and... No, nothing of that sort. I'm perfectly healthy right now. It's really difficult to say, but can you promise me you'll listen at least? All right. What is this about, Zach? I should have been upfront with you about this a long time ago. Mm. Well, Ashton found out without me telling him anything. But you already know how that guy is. Can't hide anything from him. If it's something you're having trouble saying, you don't have to force yourself to tell me. I'll forget I ever saw anything and won't ask questions. Promise. Oh, she's such a good girl. No, I need to get this off my chest eventually. Besides, we're already here. Might as well finish what I started, yeah? Yeah. If you say so. She takes a seat on the couch, her posture easy and open, and her smile honest. As if this is just a simple talk between two friends on a regular day. Is it? It is far from one, but her unreserved air is enough to stamp down the twinge of an ease that threatens to come up. Let's hear it then. And she does. True to her words, she listens while the story spills out of my mouth, of my pa and pa, ma and pa, that little old diner across the pond, and what it left me that day. I can't recall most of it now, my own account jagged with a few missing details here and there, the passing years have eroded most of my recollection of the whole incident. All except for that one moment in the kitchen. The ringing of gunshots are as vivid as it sounded that day. Even Ma's hysterical screams that mom the moment Pa's body hits the floor motionless, his life blood flowing out from under him. And the gunman? He was smiling. He was smiling when Pa opened the door to welcome him. He was smiling when he put a bullet to Pa's chest in Ma's head. 
I've heard stories of how the world can be a cruel place for people like us before. I never believed until that moment. Nan and Gran took us right after that. Sis and I flew straight to New Jersey as soon as they heard the news. A few days after, Ma and Pa were laid to rest. And we have a new home a continent away. I didn't even get the chance to take my favorite pillow with me. They said something about the change of environment would be good for us. <laughs> they had no idea the different kind of ghosts would follow me here. I expected questions, mostly those brimming with childlike curiosity, and maybe some that are a little too hard to answer. But to her credit, she just sat there, let her ears and looked at me with no expectations or unnecessary judgment in her eyes. She appears wiser and older like this, easier to see the breadwinner in her. Her younger siblings are lucky to have her, and we're so lucky that she's still alive. Yeah, good. When I'm done, after everything's been said, she wraps her arms around me. A bit awkward considering the gap in our heights, but it gets her sentiment across. But it's uh, difficult to answer this in kind. If I'm even supposed to reciprocate this, the gesture given my earlier apprehension. She pulls away shortly with a smile on her face. Not the reaction I braced myself for, but it is obviously better than what I imagined. Uh, are you not gonna say anything? Am I supposed to say anything after? Like, apologize or something? I don't think that's very appropriate, but <laughs> if you want to hear one, I can think of something real quick. Oh, come on, though. <laughs> not really. Other people have something to say after usually, and they're not necessarily nice either. Oh. Oh, okay then. I won't. I can't think of something anyway. Sorry, I'm not very good with this. It's okay. Who else knows, by the way? My older sister, grandparents, and just Ash and you for now. Maybe, maybe I think I should tell Rebecca too, but. But not right now. Yeah. Not right now. When I'm ready. Like today. I'm sure she'll be willing to hear you out once you do. I don't doubt she will. I'm more afraid of how she'll react after. One step at a time, yeah? Phew. Surprisingly, it feels good to get that one out of my chest. I was a little afraid you'd be angrier. I didn't tell you earlier than today. <laughs> I'm not angry. I'm just surprised. You didn't look like it. I wouldn't have suspected. I suppose that's how it often is, isn't it? We all have our... Uh, what's the word Becca uses? Inner demons? Well, you have a different kind of inner demon right now, Sabella. So... <laughs> but this is something personal to you. I understand why you'd rather have a few people know. That too. Well, these past few weeks haven't been easy for you. I didn't want to add that. Not after last night. Something passes in her face. Grief fleeting and disappears right before I can recognize what it is. You okay? Yep, no worries. I'll I'll be fine. Look, about last night. Never mind. This isn't a good time. But don't lose sleep over this, all right? What's important is you got what you want to say out. And if you need me, I'll be here. I should be relieved. Her words are more than reassuring to my ears. There should be comfort in hearing those alone, in knowing I have another person to rely on if ever things go bad. But somehow, I find myself worrying more for her instead. I'll make another attempt to get the story out of her if I can. But this is a dance I know all too well, and with her, I doubt forcing her to say something will yield any results. As much as I want to imitate Ash, there's only so much I can ask that won't result in something a little over-disastrous. At best, she'll stop talking to me until a week passes. At worst, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather not risk it. I've never seen her angry. Outright annoyed, maybe, and often directed at Ash, but never furious. Uh, what did they say again about ha the happiest people when angered? Mm, uh, anyway, besides, it'd be unfair to her after our, our little chat. So, uh, food then? She seems relieved at the brisk change of subject and as if it has been simply waiting for its cue all this time. Her stomach grumbles at the mention of food. <laughs> Rather loudly, as a matter of fact. Alrighty, Missy. We're going to get some chow now. Better be quick, though. Can't have your stomach starting a revolution on us here. D don't make fun of me. I'm not that hungry.
hungry? <laughs> Maybe a little. I didn't think I'd end up skipping dinner last night. Well, a lot happened. <laughs> and now we have one starved stomach protesting. Sorry, it'll be nothing fancy, since I'm a little low on stocks. Hmm. I should probably drop by the grocery store after the meeting this afternoon. I can make a quick run for you if you want. Nah, I've got enough to put together something nice here. Maybe. I could always improvise if we're missing an ingredient or two. It ain't like we're going for a Michelin three-star status here. <laughs> also, didn't I say you were a guest? <laughs> is this a Filipino thing? Or just Rebecca rubbing off on you? Well, it is kind of like... <laughs> uh, kind of like a Filipino thing. <laughs> the soft laughter that comes from her doesn't quite reach her eyes. Neither... The answer is... Neither. Because if she stays idle, I'll... Oh, she'll remember. On second thought, I might need a little help slicing up the potatoes while I prep the ham. You up for that? What? Do you think instant noodles are all I'm about? Well... Well, uh, seeing your room the other day... Yeah, kinda. I'll Sorry, have Bella. you know, I can cook a mean paella with my eyes closed. All my siblings love it. <laughs> Hell, it's so easy. Just fucking fried rice, put some tomato sauce or ketchup, then put the freaking fish in it. <laughs> and some vegetables, sorry. Sure you can. Come on. I think I know what we'll do with those spare ingredients. Alright, there you go. They're off to cooking. Alright, I just want to say something about Zach. You know, you know what they say about people. Like, some of the happiest and kindest people usually have a really fucked up backstory not really that fucked up but uh, you know there's they have this they, ha they have a really dark past or maybe they experience something really dark or brooding in a way that's why they're being nice to people uh, as a kind of like a defense mechanism or something I'm not really sure but I, I think you get my point guys anyway uh, despite the massive effort to keep the mood light with small chatter cooking ends up being a mostly quiet affair. Det between us, the consistent clapping of the knife against the board and the muffled noise from the television I left running, words have been become surprisingly difficult to string together. Not entirely unusual, we've had moments like this before, but definitely unnerving with how things are now. I really wish someone else would come knocking at the door. As pleasant as this is, breaking the ice or keeping a conversation going has Never been my forte. That has always been Isabella's or Rebecca's department. Sometimes ashes, but uh, the most coming from him border and awkward or embarrassing. Speaking of the guy, he never did call back, and I'm willing to bet my entire yearly salary that he fell right back to sleep after that call. Oh. Sorry, Bella. Could you? Yep, I got it. The potatoes are almost ready, by the way. I turned down the heat just in case. You might want to check on them, though. All right. Hold on! I'll be right there! Wonder if it's in the door. Sheesh! Wait up! If you keep rapping at the door like that, you'll break it down! Ash! Oh, good. You're awake. Oh, it is Ash. <laughs> okay. I was expecting the ghost bitch or something. Why will she even, even knock at the door? I don't know. Never mind. Ash has already welcomed himself in when I take my eyes away from the oven. He's never been really keen with the notion of courtesy courtesies after he's warmed up to you, this guy. All 13 of my locks he broke can attest to that. What? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ash! Why will you do that? Anyway, he's a good fellow though. Maybe a tad bit standoffish at first glance, but he's trustworthy. I think standoffish is an understatement. Fucking wearing fingerless gloves and the freaking coat and the visual K look, whatever. Don't you have work today? I could ask the same of you. Hey, Z man it's Don't call me Z-Man. You're late. Something came up? You need to drop the Z-Man. It's getting old. Sorry. I got caught with something at the precinct on the way here. Had to attend to that first before things got out of hand. I'd tell you about it, but you know how it can be with those kinds of things. Later, maybe. And you're here because... What? I'm not allowed to say hello? I doubt you're here because of that. And you're not answering my question. Ah, my bad, my bad. Forgot to mention that. He called earlier looking for you. Rebecca's worried because you didn't come home last night. Oh yeah. You could have called my cell instead. You weren't picking up. 
Anyway, <laughs> I'd really hate to cut this little get-together short, but I need to be somewhere else. Come on, Isabella, let's get you home. I'll drop you off on the way. Wait, we're going now? Well, we haven't eaten yet. He lightly claps a hand on her arm and begins ushering her out of the apartment, throwing a casual wave at me as they pass. Isabella, on the other hand, doesn't appear too fond of the idea. And sure enough, before they can even cross the threshold, she puts a firm foot down, the force alone enough to halt them both and catch the taller man off guard. It would have made for a funny picture. The way Ash almost crashes into her and Isabella giving him an indignant pout over her shoulder. Surprise and confusion are in his face all at once. Two things that rarely ever grace it if he can help it. A rare moment even for our small group. If only I have my camera with me. Which is right over there! Dang it. What is it? Zach cooked something. Exactly, Ash. If it's just food, I'll get you something on the way back. But we cooked this together. But the food! It's Zach's cooking. <laughs> Real delicious food that actually tastes like food. <laughs> At least stay and have a bite. Please? Zach, help me here. These two, whenever they are in the same room, sometimes it feels like herding a group of unruly kids instead of talking to two mature adults. One moment they're engaged in a pleasant chit chat, and the next they're bickering over a minor issue. Frankly, if I didn't know any better and I have an overactive imagination, I'd say there's something going. <sighs> no! No, I will not ship my baby Isabella with this asshole. Nope, I will not. Well, no, I will not accept that. Fuck you. No relationships for you, dude. Never mind how utterly impossible that idea is. Exactly. Okay, it's entirely, utterly impossible, Zach. Or it might just be me reading too much into things like always. I can already hear Ash's laughter if so much I, you know, as I suggest as such. Hmm. This, however... Um, if I say I cooked up a feast... That means I'm inviting Ash. If I say that I know you're busy, I'm, I'm acknowledging that he's busy, and I'm accepting that he can go off with Isabella and stuff. But I want them to stay. Eh, I could put a few boys. about you two, but I think you guys should really stay. I've already made enough food for all of us, and it'd be a waste. Exactly, Zach. Why I cooked up that special honey glazed ham you two keep on yapping about. Got some scalloped potatoes with onions and cheddar to go with it, too. Mmm, that sounds actually pretty good. The oven timer? Dings! I shoot the two of them an apologetic look before sauntering over the kitchen, mittens in hand. The sweet smell of the glaze and salty tang of melted cheese wafts through the air as soon as I open the door and take out the two trays inside. The scent immediately fills the entire room, and even with the door and windows open, the mouth-watering aroma lingers. It's appealing enough that when I put the dishes down on the counter, another starved stomach protests loudly, followed by a burst of laughter. <laughs> Look at Isabella! Look at the fucking asshole. My head snaps up at the two of them, and I can't keep back the smile at the sight they make. <laughs> Isabella is clinging to the door frame for support, doubled over with bre breathless laughter. <clears throat> Ash is the more composed of the two, trying to look unconcerned, but a flush has crept up his neck and cheeks. It's clear whose stomach that came from, and Isabella's not going to let him live this down. <laughs> You're in no place to reject an offer of free food, Frey. Yeah, Frey. I wasn't. I wasn't rejecting anything. Damn it! I just missed a meal. That's all. Aw, <laughs> he's flustered. <laughs> Shut it! Those guys at the precinct said it was urgent. Somebody has to be responsible for it. Well, aren't you precious? Right. You know, if you keep laughing like that, you'll burst. I'm sure it won't be as bad as your stomach suddenly rumbling like a starved. Hi, kiddos. Play nice. <laughs> Who's gonna get cold if we keep this up? Ash, you gonna stay? Might as well, since Scaredy Cat's so hell-bent on staying. Alright. There you go. Look at how happy they are. Awesome. Alright, we eventually settle down after the food has been served. The jibes replaced by another round of friendly chatter, mostly about what's on the news the night before. There is, however, a conscious effort to avoid mentioning what's currently on the headlines. The dead is never a good topic to talk over food and polite company. This case in particular. The wounds are too fresh too soon. 
I'd likely avoid it as well if I were in her position. And someone I personally knew passed away in a gruesome manner like that. And though perhaps the closest we got to broaching the topic is when the infamous mansion is brought up again. But even then, we are careful, Ash and I. We keep the conversation light and avoid bringing up her late business partner. It's the least we can do. The rights? Yeah, they're planning to move in soon. In fact, they already have a housewarming party planned. Oh, yes. It's why they wanted us to rush the papers. They wanted to send the invitations out as soon as possible. There you oh, go. Oh, now I get it. Oh, look at this surprise look. Get what? Remember what I told you last night about the new clients? Vaguely? Mm -hmm. Sorry. I was a little out of it yesterday. Oh yeah, he's supposed to like be a photographer for the magazine and interview rights, the rights and stuff. Was it the photo shoot? There you go. Photo yep. Shoot. It's actually for the one you saw. Ermin. Ermat. It's something. It Ermakar mansion. When you put it that way, I suppose it makes sense why my boss wants me to prioritize the couple. They can have those documents rushed at just the snap of their fingers. Then they're more influential than I initially thought. Man, I guess my boss is expecting a lot more from this project than I expected. Hope I can live up to it. I think you already did. <laughs> Your photographs are more than good enough, Zack. You'd probably win an international award if you let yourself. Ma'am Hana's easy to please, too. As long as you're good at following instructions. Hmm, that's true. Easier said than done. Different clients have different tastes, after all. Well, actually, she likes you already. Hana, I mean. Still, a week? I don't think that's possible. Now that you mentioned it, yeah. They wanted everything finished at the earliest. To be honest, it's not unheard of, but... But it's still fish... weird. Still weird, yeah? A slip of the tongue. Still barely noticeable to someone who's already familiar with Ash's ways. Yet, in this moment, it's impossible to miss. I shoot him a curious glance, but he ignores it. Rather pointedly. I can't exactly say it's like that. Where... I'm just the middleman, after all. As much as I want to comment on it, I only know what's on the surface, not the in and outs. So wait, what's weird, Ash? You know, the... What? Is it weird that they're so filthy rich that they can process everything that, that quickly? What's weird? Oh god, Ash knows something we don't. It's hey, just hey. that BRC and my boss are more hands-on with the legal stuff this time despite having a separate department dedicated to it. Maybe Mr. Wright helped with it too. They have their own legal team for this, don't they? Well, they should have one, especially for a big property like this. They have, but like I said, it's off our hands. Rose and I don't handle this stuff in the office. If anything, to me, this just means I'll be able to send the rest of the funds to Papa's treatment earlier. <sighs> I guess that makes a whole lot of sense. Officially off our instant noodle diet, aren't we? Hey, hey. Ash, has anyone ever told you that you have an uncanny way of ruining the mood? Uncanny? What? I was just saying. A few more months of stuffing your face with those, and I'm sure you'll start to look like a noodle cup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a pretty picture. Why did I laugh at Ash's joke? Fuck you, Ash. At least I don't live off convenience store food. Or make poor, unassuming pressure cookers explode. Oh, ho, ho, what? How did you... Oh, come on, Zack! <laughs> so, sorry, it just came up while we were cooking earlier. I'm impressed, Ashton Frey. You even made it to the news. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> Alright. A one-time thing, and it wasn't as big as you seem to be imagining. Oh, sure. Let's all pretend that one time you almost set my apartment on fire didn't happen, too. Hey, that was an accident. You were making a salad, Ash. <laughs> How can you burn a place down by making a salad? What? Can we please move on to a different topic? <laughs> it helps the casual talk, the harmless teasing, the mundane stories interesting enough to let time pass unnoticed. By the time lunch ends, the shadows are no longer at forefront of my mind. If it's the same for Isabella, for whatever troubles her, I can never tell. These things, the anxiety, the fear, they ain't easily seen. Ain't easily forgotten after all. You go on ahead. I've got a few things I need to ask Zach. Oh, it's already dusk. Or dark. Dusk, yeah. I'll be downstairs in a minute. Confusion briefly flashes in her eyes as she catches the keys. 
he tosses over, but he doesn't give her an answer and waves for her to go ahead. How sure are you I won't be driving away with your Shirley? You don't even have a license! Do you even know how to? Hmm? Papa taught me how. I'm probably a better driver than you. Hmm, coming from a jeepney driver's daughter. I see. See you later, Zach. Thanks for the food. <laughs> Always has to have the last word, don't you? <laughs> You're welcome. I'll send you the recipe for the potatoes tonight. Nice. The grin is back on her face when she leaves and closes the door behind her. Oh, will she be okay? Alone and stuff like that? God, I don't know. For a little while after we were left alone, Ash goes wholly quiet, listening, waiting for her remaining footsteps in the hall to fade. The earlier amusement is gone from his face, replaced by what I can only describe as trepidation. I know that look all too well. When he's like this, he's expecting shit about to go down at some point soon. That wasn't very nice, Ash. What was that with Isabella earlier? You're usually subtler with your questions. They hired you. Hired me who? Don't change the subject yet. What's really going on here? Yeah, Ash. The Wrights. Luke and Hannah Wright. You said your next gig is with them. Is that what this is all about? Just be careful around them. You have no idea what you're dealing with when it comes to that couple. What is up with that couple? We didn't really... Hannah didn't really show us anything, you know, just anything too suspicious about the Wrights. Maybe look. We'll have the answers we're looking for. Oh shit! All right, all right, all right, all right. I've co I completely forgot. There are two rights: Hannah, which is our precious little waifu, and then there's Luke, who's probably much more of an asshole than Ash. So all right, here we go. I'd rather you stay as far away from them as possible, but you're already here. Isabel is the real estate agent. <sighs> Seriously, of all the people in Luxburn. Yeah, you're pretty much caught up in this winding, uh, twisting roller coaster ride, Ash. And you're also probably cursed by now. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll just have to take your word for it. He nods, claps a comforting hand with my back, and turns to leave without another word. He's never been good with those. More often, he fumbles with what he wants to say, but his actions alone are enough to tell me how grateful he is for the trust. He reaches for the knob as soon as he gets to the door, but doesn't turn it. Instead, he looks back and gestures with his head towards the table. I don't need to follow his line of sight to know what he's going to ask about. He's likely taken notice of it the moment he entered the room. You back on those? I haven't seen you taking them in a year. Oh, the pills. Yeah, I kinda had to. It got worse after the film fest. The dreams, that is. Oh, I see. Too bad, Zach. I, I don't think I'll be doing that again anytime soon. <laughs> Especially with the topic of his indie film about black lives and stuff. Heard about that. Don't drop it though. You don't want Becca scolding you. She actually enjoyed the movie you made, and she's hard to please. Consider that a small victory. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. She already did. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca and Bella both gave me an earful after I said the opposite. Promised them I wouldn't, but you can never tell. Mm. Hopefully, once I feel better. I'll be able to think about it properly. Speaking of Bella, she didn't open up to me, but maybe with you and Rebecca... Yeah, I'll try. I can't promise anything, but I'll talk to her. Thanks. That's all I'm asking. This time, when he reaches for the door, he lets it close fully behind him without glancing back. A mild draft sweeps into the room as I close the door behind him, slightly disturbing the papers on the nearby fridge. A low note flutters by my feet. The letters on the surface glaring at me with mute intensity. <gasps> Is it the fucking letter? Oh yeah, Ermagan Mansion. Hannah Wright, 11 a.m. for a luxury living. Okay, all right, cool. After Ashton's warnings, they all hold a different meaning now. Yeah, we can never be too careful. October 27, mm -hmm. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's something. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. The next two days rush by in a blur, all together leaving a collective mess of work suddenly piling up and new unexpected acquaintances or friends. I think Zach's humming the song that his mother was hummed, hummed him. Okay. Depends on how you look at it, really. Either way, I'm stuck developing these photos at 3 in the morning to reach a deadline set by an overeager author. 
or two. Mm, 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 3 a.m. Mm, 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 Why would you develop it at 3 a.m., dude? Mm, mm, of all the times... Okay, this is not gonna end well. We'll see. Don't get me wrong, Julius is good, has a vision, and knows what he wants, but damn, he can be too enthusiastic sometimes. Doesn't matter when you couldn't sleep anyway. There is nothing new in it, of course. After years of working as a freelance photographer, it's simply something I have grown used to. Get to know people, build a, uh, build a client base, do good work, and cash in some late hours if need be. Rinse and repeat. It certainly takes a while to get some footing on the field, but it's the kind of the thing of thing that pays off in the long run as long as you keep at it. Given enough time, you might end up with the big names on your client list. Names like the rights in particular. Hey, yeah, I can kind of relate with that here. You know, I, uh, in my career right now, it's really important to build relationships with different brands and different people. You you get to some some point in in your career as an influencer, you get to meet this really important people that you never imagined to meet and you kind of work with them in a way but the relationship the mutual casual relationship is also very important build rapport yeah, that's what you call it all right so i never did pay much attention to the rights but it's virtually impossible not to hear about them when a local news channel or paper has something to say on their name a party here, an acquisition there, sometimes it's a new business venture, other times it's the everyday gossip that typically follows popular people like them. Not in a million years did I ever imagine I would end up working for such a high profile couple. And between that and the fuss that comes with it, it leaves me no time to ponder over whatever happened to Isabella or why Ash is so adamant uh, that we keep away from the pair. They do seem like the good folk, though, despite the whole fame thing. Oh, Hannah in particular. Sure, there was a rumor running around years ago about him being involved in some business scandal. But just like every gossip blown out of proportion by the media, nothing came of it, and eventually it simply died down. Much is definitely left to be said for the husband, but I doubt a woman like Miss Wright will pick him if he doesn't have any good points at all. Mm. Miss Wright, Hannah herself, though, she ain't particularly bad the way the press makes her out to be. The tabloids had it all wrong, that's for sure. For someone born with a silver spoon in her mouth, well, she ain't exactly what I was expecting. Oh, she already met. Oh, so this was after the photo shoot and stuff like that. Oh, I see. All right, good. Among other things, the newfound friendship is what I least expected from her, but here we are. Although with a life as public as the rights, no wonder it's the woman who often gets the crappy end of the stick. I can't help but feel sorry for her. She's a real nice person when given the chance. Heck, she might have even ended up friends with Rebecca and Isabella too if they weren't living worlds apart. Well, Rebecca's rich. <laughs> has some history with her already, so that's good. Well, probably. Uh, the beep quickly pulls me back before my thought travels any further. In one practice motion, I carefully place the wet print I'm holding on a drying rack and amble over my makeshift dark room to get the last photos from the water bath. <laughs> if this was as cliche as I think it will be, he's gonna pull out a photo of Mrs. Wright being strangled by that ghost bitch. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Inside the converted bro broom closet, the film processor lets out another soft clack before going on its standby mode. At its mouth, a lone photograph sits on the tray, barely visible with the light, lack of light. It's the last one tonight for the set Miss Wright requested. I don't usually make this a habit, giving away stuff that is. It's bad for the business no matter how well-intentioned or generous you are. This exception, however... She did treat me well and was a pleasant companion all throughout the shoot. Even if she didn't ask, I would have probably given her a few prints just for the hell of it. Miss Wright ain't such a bad subject matter to begin with. And maybe this is just me, but for someone who has everything at the palm of her hands, all the money in the world, a loving husband, and a plenty big mansion to call home, she's... lonely. She doesn't just appear like it. It shows in the tone of her voice, how she moves, and most certainly in her smiles. Always hidden behind the glamour for the world to never see. Sometimes, sometimes for people like her, 
Small things like these helps. A little reminder, reminder that the world can be kind too. Water drips from the paper as I blindly pick it up and gently lay it onto another tray, holding a decent amount of photo flow. A few seconds under the solution is all it needs before it's ready for drying. No good rushing this last one even if my body's already screaming for some decent snooze. My hand fumbles for the light switch, moving towards it with familiarity, while I fish for a squeegee among the mess of tools on a drawer with the other. The bulb flickers twice before it close settles and casts a soft light in the tiny space. When I glance back down, squeegee in hand, ready to finish the process and finally calling it a night. What on earth? Oh shit, here we go. Ooh, damn, that's not a pretty picture at all. Her head is gone. Not really gone, but, you know, it's like we used a blur tool and so, or the squeegee tool and then just... <laughs> Photoshop peeps, alright. Blurred and distorted beyond recognition, rather. The area completely smudged over, leaving no trace of the same sweet smile the good woman carried in all the previous prints. Damn, that was too careless! Mm -hmm. A common mistake to make, of course, if one is negligent enough to pick a newly processed photo in the dark, like I apparently did. It has happened before, loads of times, actually. But I still can't help but feel a small pang of frustration over one mistake a newbie will likely make. With a sigh, I reach up for the switch again, intending to develop a new one from scratch. It could pass off for one of those supernatural pictures they show on TV, though. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you say, Zach. A memory clicks, one cursory thought in the sea of many, and a short yet distinct second from the day before. A glimpse is all I got, but it's enough to burn the image in my mind. Oh yeah, he saw the, she saw the bitch strangling her. There was a shadow. No, that's not a shadow, dude. That is not a shadow. A woman, in her twenties or early thirties, maybe. But with how far gone her flesh alone has become, it's not possible to tell at first glance. The skin itself has already taken a sickly pale color, rotten in most parts, blood dripping from every open gash and lesion on her body. Wow, you have a really decent vivid memory, Zach! Bony hands grip Miss Wright's neck like a noose, staining the skin underneath with a vibrant shade of scarlet. Nothing but malice fills the gleam in her eyes. Zachary! Not for me, but for Miss Wright. Zach, is something the matter? Oh, no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something that's all. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? The memory alone is enough to make me wretch. I brushed it off then. A trick of the eye, I told myself, or a product of the heat. The weather has been unexpectedly warm recently, so it shouldn't be too surprising for such things to happen. Uh, and, well... Blaming this on the usual fatigue, an overworked brain, the weather, or an amateur error on my part is far more convenient. It makes a whole lot of sense than what the small voice inside me head on inside my head whispers. The same tiny voice that only makes itself known when something's a foul. The same one that led a curious ear to Isabella's worries about the mansion. Sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> and with each second thought, I spent staring at his photograph. The murmurs in my head only grow louder against my ears. Someone has to know. Shit, who do I show this to? Fuck, does it even matter? Oh god. Oh god, this is supposed to be very important. Should I show it to Ash or show it should I show it to Hannah? Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. What benefit does it give if I show it to Hannah? What benefit does it give me if I show it to Ash? Ash will probably just nudge it off as something stupid. Hannah, on the other hand, will probably think that I should show it to Hannah. Because Hannah, probably at this point on, or maybe at some point, will probably... Probably... I don't know, fuck. After this today, he's supposed to go to the we're supposed to go to the to the party and stuff like that. I don't know. Fuck. Alright, I'm I'm showing it to Hannah. 
And I think she needs to know because uh, she experienced the ghost bitch already. Ash under the red, I'm not sure, so. Showing to Hannah. I don't have an explanation for what I saw yesterday. Yet. But when you've been there, seen something enough to raise the hairs at the back of your neck or leave you wanting to flee or hide, finding a more solid proof than a person smudged off face on a photo is the least of my concerns. Ashton will undoubtedly give me a flag for saying that or even considering Isabella's words and those silly tales about the place. The guy is a skeptic through and through. It will take more than my account for him to get to even give this a single thought. However, more than his opinion, it's Mrs. Wright I'm concerned about. Surely she must have felt something of those shows on TV to be believed. A touch of coldness in her neck or maybe the feeling of being watched. That's what often happens, ain't it? Outside, the sun has yet to rise. I've still got a few hours before dawn. Good enough time to mull over of our, uh, over how I'll go about warning her. Plenty of space to check if I'll get the same result if I redo the process again. The film processor hums back to life at my touch. The light switch gives out a soft click, and darkness embraces a small closet again. Somehow those urban legends don't sound so silly now. Mm -hmm. Alright, there we go. We've ended this. It's now... The... What day was that? Oh yeah, we're gonna show the picture. Oh shit, alright. In hindsight, this is a dumb idea. That is to say, rushing to a client I barely know homes for... Knows home first thing in the morning with news of a ghost lady potentially haunting their newly bought property. Oh, and there's a bunch of bizarre looking pictures of Miss Hannah's I've brought as proof too. So yeah, dumbest idea in the history of my dumb ideas. All things considered. Traveling to the outskirts of Ansem Village at the crack of dawn with only my bike as company? Equally so. Personally, I do not think any of them will take whatever I'm going to say well no matter how nice or accommodating they are. Ashton himself will tell me the same thing. Odds are he'll laugh at it in my face for good measure. If he doesn't freak out at me first for not listening to his warnings. Still, that's a whole separate can of worms I'll open at a different time, seeing as I'm already standing at the right's front porch waiting for someone to answer the door. More than anything, Miss Wright needs to know there's possibly nothing safe in this place. Warni warnings from friends be damned. If only someone would answer the door sooner. Come on. Come on, your hands, Mr. Wright. I try to ignore the looming presence their large ornate doors give off as I press the doorbell for the fourth time. Its shrill ringing merely echoes, carried off by another warm passing breathe. The first, ki first time I came to this place, I found myself basking in the silence it offers. Now, the atmosphere is just heavy, packed with trepidation and tension. Isabella's right. It does radiate the creepy kind of vibe. And with the image from the day before constantly flashing in my mind, the unease becomes harder to ignore as each second drifts by. Not wanting to spend more time here than necessary, I rang the bell again. Another long second ticks by without anyone answering the door. If this fails, I can always go to Ash. Not really the most sensible course of action either, but waiting here ain't doing me any good. For all I know, the rides could be out of town. As luck would have it, just as I'm about to turn on my heel, a loud thump rises from the other side. That's followed by heavy footfalls and a string of very colorful expletives about one's parentage. Didn't we have that bloody annoying doorbell replaced yesterday? That I have started to cost me a fortune and she can't even fix this new thing. <laughs> Fucking Luke. And where the hell is? Your hands, if another po-faced prat is pressing that blighted bell, I swear I'll cut there. Tell me where the others are there. The door swings open and a very irate Mr. Wright greets me. His partly rumpled appearance, a clear testament to how early the hour is. And who might you be? Your... I don't recall asking the movers to show up this early. Ah, uh, how rude. As always. I was prepared to face Miss Wright, the, their butler more so. But Mr. Wright, I don't quite know how to make of him yet. He surely knows how to make an impression, I'll give him that. I'll bite a rude one. I only caught sight of him yesterday as he's directing the movers. Although from how exasperated he sounded then, it seemed like more yelling was done than actual giving of directions. Needless to say, I'd like to believe those instances ain't all there is to this guy. Miss Wright at the end of the day did marry him though. Standing before him like now though is a different story altogether. Despite the difference in our respective heights, he manages to make it appear like he is one the one looking down at me, not the other way around. 
An apology instinctively forms in my mouth before anything else when he arches an eyebrow at my lack of response. Well, um, that's not exactly why I'm here, uh, Mr. Wright. Yeah? Yeah. Right, of course, the one and only. And what can I do for you this fine morning? Have I seen you somewhere before? Bloody you peasants all look the same to me. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Who fucking uses this word in this, you know, this modern society anyway? Jesus Christ. Straight out of a freaking cliche book, if I can say so myself. I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm actually. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I've got someplace important to be at today. As I said, typical rich guy in some cartoons and stuff like that. <laughs> to spit out what you want or be gone. I haven't got all day. His eyes are sharp and expecting in spite of his indifferent tone. The very impression of someone whose sharp wits have served him well throughout life. The kind you have to carefully choose your words around. Disconcerting how a simple conversation can easily seem like a ruthless form of social maneuvering. I can see why Miss Wright would want to steer clear, clear of it if only for a short while. And sometimes the only way out of the game is to be honest. Well? Well, pretty much. Hmm. Hmm. If I say I'm a photographer for luxury living, it's kind of odd why I would come here. If I say I'm a friend of Hannah, I think Hannah will back me up. Either of the two isn't really, you know, uh, isn't really lying or something like that. But true to our own intentions of why we even visited is because as a friend of Hannah, I need to warn her. So, I don't know how, he's probably gonna get pissed knowing that it's his... His wife has a friend is friends with me or something like that. We'll see. I'm a friend of Hannah. Sorry, sir. I, I was just... You see, I, I'm a friend of Hannah and... A friend of Hannah! <laughs> Six! I expected that. I expected that reaction. Oh, damn. Uh, yes, sir. His eyebrows shoot into his hairline at my answer. <laughs> <laughs> his freaking laugh, guys. Although it swiftly disappears under his dismissive gesture and chuckle at his heels. A small frown spreads across my face before I can stop myself. What I said has nothing remotely funny in it, yet here he is, hugging my an arm closer to himself in a weak attempt to keep his shoulders from shaking. Did I mispronounce something or wrong or No no not at all, you didn't She my wife has never mentioned a friend like you. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Not yet. Mm, I suppose it's a good thing she's venturing out of the usual. Vultures and savages, all of them hiding under sheep's clothing. Jesus Christ. Dude. I... I don't really get it, sir, but it's not really surprising she wouldn't talk about me. We just met yesterday during the shoot. As soon as the statement is out, that miserable air melts away almost palpably. His eyebrows crease into a frown and his posture stiffens. With how fast the atmosphere around us changes in merely the span of a few spoken words, I'm not quite sure what I can and can't say anymore. Like handling a tickling time bomb. Is this why Ashton wants us to stay away from them? If so, a part of me regrets not listening to him now. Shoot. Who are you again? Zachary Steele, sir. I was here yesterday from the magazine feature about your home. Ah, that Zachary. The photographer. I remember now. See, she did mention me. Just when you think she'd be careful meddling around media types these days, she makes friends with one. It was really just small chit-chat, sir. The usual. Uh, to keep things entertaining. The shoot did take the whole afternoon to finish. Oh, I'm sure she was pleasantly entertained. She wouldn't be making friends with media types if she wasn't. No matter. She's her own woman. She can do what she wants, so long as she doesn't do anything to ruin herself. I'm sure Miss Wright is aware of that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that she is. But we aren't here to talk about her, are we? What is this about today? The city is a long way from here. <laughs> On pushbike, no less. I... yeah, I was actually hoping to talk to her. Of course! Here for another headline, perhaps? Mm, Not exactly, uh, sir. Uh, I'm off work. This is for something else. <laughs> That's what they always say. The next thing you know, your face is in the front page of every conceivable scandal sheet going all the way to the ass end of Plymouth. 
Uh, <laughs> he's been through a lot, probably. <laughs> Lots of tabloid headlines about Mr. Wright and stuff like that. You media types have such an insatiable taste for gossip. It's almost amazing. He really hates the media now, despite loving them in the same way. There won't be any of that in an interior design magazine, sir. I can assure you that one. Oh, you never know. Well-trained hounds have an uncanny way of sniffing out things no matter where you keep them. I do admire the passion, though. It takes a lot of energy for someone to leave bed this early, let alone knock at someone else's door at this hour. That aside, unfortunately, you're going to have to come back some other day. Why? You see, darling wife left not a moment to go. I have not an inkling where she went or when she'll be back. So you're better off. Love, is it the movers? Right and cue there, Miss Hannah, right? He stops speaking altogether and the complacent expression he has collapses on itself. Slowly, he turns just as his wife walks up to him with a step too lively for comfort. A smile too sweet, to be honest. She's very likely heard everything her husband and I have talked about. Going off somewhere. <laughs> I've got the few things I want them to transfer already. Marianne made this splendid arrangement for the music room and... Love, are you listening? I thought you already left, Buttercup. She musters a frown, spout more like. <laughs> the mischievous gleam in her eyes when she glances at me says all there is I need to know. I would have laughed at her antics if it wouldn't offend the other man, but as it is, it's better to let his wife have her fun without any reaction from me. I'm treading on dangerous ground with him already. Well, I most certainly have not left yet. I wouldn't be standing here if I did, would I? <laughs> of course you wouldn't be, darling. Of course. Don't you need to be somewhere else today? Something, something with Marianne? Shopping girl things? Oh, I'll be leaving in a few. Unless you want to join us. Oh, no, thanks, darling. I'm afraid my liver is killing me today. I'm just dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought as much. You needn't have to worry. I'll be gone in a few. It's just that I heard we have a visitor. What kind of person would I be if I didn't greet him before leaving? A very gracious one, I'm sure. Zachary, right? Zach? It's a pleasure to see you again. Likewise, ma'am. I was actually looking for you. Is that so? What for? A huge display of unprofessionalism is what it's for. <laughs> Shush, darling. Let the man speak. I'm sure it isn't anything like that if he has to come all the way here, yes? It's about yesterday. The photos you asked, I mean. The copies are ready, but... My hand still says I'm about to fish the prints out of my pocket. A short second passes that which strikes me how I didn't think this through at all. How I'll go about telling her regarding the strange photos or revealing this to her in the presence of another person! Fuck you, Luke! Her husband gazes over us like a hawk doesn't provide any sort of comfort either. And just like that, all the words I have been practicing to say on the way here inevitably fall stiffly off my mouth. Miss Wright must have noticed my hesitance because shortly. <gasps> Sorry for that, guys. She gives her husband's arm a gentle squeeze, a tender smile gracing her face. Unlike the first, this one is meant to appease. Love, I think Hansi might need some of your input for the final guest list. Could you check on him, please? <laughs> Good job, Miss Anna. Bollocks! Why in all Luxborn do I have to be there? Doing tedious jobs are what he's being paid for. Because if we end up with people whose faces you do not want to show up in our housewarming party, we won't be hearing the end of it. Unless That's a heavy true. dose of liquor is involved. You know what the doctor said about that. Please do poor Hansi and your liver a favor, hmm? He can handle that on his own, Buttercup. And my liver is doing just fine. I'm sure it is. But I don't know, love. I think I caught a glimpse of the name Mitch Lakes, was it? I think it was Mitch Lakes on it when I checked with Hansi earlier. You should see for yourself. It was quite a list. Who put that blighted twat in there? <laughs> and that's why I'm asking you to look over it before I do so tonight. <sighs> Very well. But even with that promise, he doesn't appear ready to leave. Short of passing through their doors, he stops and glances back at me, all without bothering to hide the distrust in his eyes. Look, dear, I'll be fine. Go back to your butler. I'm not some pregnant wife you have to worry about. 
Fine, fine. I have to go to that little ankle biter's career day later anyway. I don't see why I have to go there. Kylie's your goddaughter. And yet, she has you around her little fingers, darling. That's basically the same thing. Uh, if he ever has an answer to that, we don't get to hear it above the heavy thud the door makes, and Miss Wright's own wary exhale after she's sure her husband is out of our earshot. She's nothing but apologetic when she fixes her gaze back at to me, and I can't help but return the same to her. I am so sorry you had to deal with that! My husband can be a bit... trying when he really applied himself. <laughs> a bit? It's fine, Miss Wright. No harm done. It was my fault for showing up here unannounced. And this might be strange coming from me, but he does have the right to be wary. The press can be quite vicious when it wants to be. Caught unexpectedly, they'll pick you apart. It is not surprising why he acted the way he did around you. Sweetie, if Luke treats every journalist who shows up here like that, I'm afraid we'll end up with a harassment lawsuit hanging over our heads sometime in the future. Vicious or not, some sort of finesse has to be exercised when dealing with them. Yes. I'm sorry, I hope that wasn't too offensive. Not at all, Miss Wright. Besides, I don't think an interior design magazine would be interested in who harassed who this week. Unless it has something to do with fighting over tastefully arranged furniture. But hmm. even then, I don't think our readers will be too interested. Oh, dearie. You've got a lot to learn. <laughs> you really have no idea how a single tattle can ignite a spark in a crowd. Drama. Of course, at the end of the day, it's still the thought that counts. It's still a lovely anniversary gift for my husband. No matter. Let's just go. Wow, it's really raining and thundering outside. Anyway, she doesn't wait for an answer and immediately wanders over a car parked some distance from us. And sure, I find myself trailing after her. A chauffeur automatically opens the passenger side door as she nears, and she gestures for me to follow when she climbs into the back seat. To... Where are we going, exactly? I need to get out of this stuffy house for a while. Moving in, planning the party... It's starting to get suffocating in there. Luke and Hansi can have their fun while I'm gone. I don't care. I'm getting out because I can. <laughs> Another minute in there and I'll drown. My bike. There are, of course, a lot of things questionable about her invitation. Why she's asking a person she has only known for less than two days in the first place is one. How appropriate this is being another. But the rest of it crashes the moment she shoots me an imploring look. <laughs> Please. I can have someone send it back to your address later. And it's just a trip to the city for some furniture, nothing more, I assure you. Marianne will be with us, and maybe you can tell me why you're here on the way. Uh, Alright. Guess it wouldn't hurt. I might have to leave early, though. Excellent, then. Hop in. That's what they often say, yes? Yes. This can't be a good idea, but I really don't have any other choice, do I? Especially with the way her eyes light up when I agree to it. In my pocket, the very picture of her remains is faceless. A voiceless shadow hanging threateningly between us, unknown to her. Alright, October 27, Lux born. Alright, Jesus Christ, he still doesn't show it to her. I was really waiting for him to show it to her before I end this episode. <laughs> yeah, so I guess you'll see the photo reveal in the next episode, guys. Yeah, so I have to end it right here because you I'm pretty sure you're tired already with this almost one hour episode but hey thank you guys for sticking uh, sticking around all right so I do hope I made the right choices I made three choices today one is that I told Isabel the truth the other is that I um, I decided to show the the photo to Hannah instead and then uh, I decided to say that I'm a friend of Hannah in front of Luke. I do hope that brews a good ending to this chapter. Or maybe not really a good one, but maybe the oh well hopefully the best one right, that we can get. Alright. So anyway guys, thank you so much for sticking around and supporting this series, and I'll see you guys again in the next episode. Bye bye.